Okay, cool. Yeah, no, uh, thanks again for having me. Uh, this is a pretty cool uh, situation. So yeah, uh, today I was just going to go over a little bit of what uh, we're doing at Rolls Royce with uh, with quantum computing. Uh, yeah, just kind of and a few of the algorithms that we're kind of uh, focusing on. So here I just have a, a picture of the the ultra fans. So this is a, a demonstrator of I think what's going to be our largest uh, uh, like turbo fan engine that we've ever made. So we have one of these, uh, and I think we're hoping to uh, get some get some uh, airlines interested in these in the future. So. Um, oh. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna run through a little bit of uh, Rolls Royce, uh, like uh, this, this company uh, that I'm doing quantum computing for. A uh, little bit of some of the applications that we are interested in, and then a few different uh, quantum algorithms that are specifically targeted at one of, or actually a few of our applications. So, um, so at Rolls, we have uh, four main business units. Uh, so civil is where uh, where we, we do a lot of uh, the stuff that we're known for, which is uh, where we, we do actually the, uh, we, we make the, the jet engines that are uh, on commercial aircraft. And uh, and so, uh, yeah, and so, so that's a big place. Uh, we also have power systems, which is uh, doing everything from like, I think trains to kind of like local uh, power. We also have a defense unit, and then this latter one is uh, where it's it's a newer thing. We're doing uh, small modular reactors. These are smaller nuclear fission reactors that are targeted, I think, like smaller towns and uh, eventually powering like uh, uh, warehouses and factories. Um, and so, yeah, between these all, we have a lot of a lot of different engineering going on. <laughs> So we have, uh, we have uh, like within this, we have uh, a lot of, uh, qu quite a few nu numerous uh, like challenges. And so uh, here we have just like a cutaway of one of our engines. And so uh, when where the air is of, of course starting, I guess on this this left area, or maybe it's over here, uh, is left for y'all. Um, and it, the, the air in is, it goes through the, the intake and then we, we get it compressed down and then we have a state of combustion that uh, then is uh, shot out the back. Uh, and this is what kind of powers, uh, not just kind of, it, it powers uh, a lot of our flight all throughout. So on a lot of our engines, we have between, I think uh, it's like 25 to 30,000 uh, individual components. And so each of these have to kind of be uh, machine, uh, like precision machine uh, to very specific tolerances. And uh, they also have to, uh, they, they undergo uh, like, like, Crazy forces, and so uh, one of these that I, I think is always a really cool thing is our uh, the the turbine blades that actually sit in the uh, in the combustor. So like in this, uh, not in the combustor, in the compressor. Uh, so like right in here, they they have fluids flowing around them. So we, we make them so that they have fluids flowing around them that where the fluid is hotter than their melting point, but then we uh, we cool them from the inside. But you can see these uh these little holes in here. So these are some some pretty intense uh, yeah devices and uh, uh, not just devices, but yeah, just engines that we have going on. Um, so so to to design these these, uh, these engines today, we use uh, we use a lot of uh, supercomputers to do our modeling, uh, but we see that these uh, eventually in the future are going to start uh, like kind of uh, trailing off. And so we are we are interested in quantum computing. And so that is uh, both what I do and also, I guess, why I'm here to talk today. Uh, so uh, a lot of a lot of times, at least in the past, we like in, within quantum computing, right? We had this idea of uh, these noisy intermediate scale uh, quantum devices. And so these are the devices that we have today uh, that are awfully noisy and maybe not the most useful for uh, things that like we care about because uh, we just can't really uh, deal with the noise. And also uh, a lot of the algorithms that we care about uh, need tens of thousands of qubits uh, running uh, many millions of operations even. Uh, so we're we're kind of targeting more of the uh, the, the fault tolerant era where we have uh, way better quantum computers, and so that could be uh, I, I think a few people a few companies have said have put this within this decade, though others are pushing this uh, this off for for a couple of couple of decades. So we'll see how that uh, that goes. But while we're getting to uh, to fault tolerant, uh, we we are still involved in uh, yeah in, in developing uh, towards that era. So uh, we're involved in a few different. Uh, programs. Uh, so, so Rolls Royce, as Rolls Royce, we're involved in a few different quantum programs. Uh, most of them are through the uh, the UK's Research and Innovation 
like hub, uh, specifically through the, uh, the National Quantum Computing Center. And so, uh, so like one of these uh, projects is uh, we're kind of just trying to get the uh, the full scale, like what the, the entire uh, throughput will look like in the future of going from uh, the problem that we're dealing with to kind of the uh, the compiled uh, circuit that we're going to be looking at to even running it on the uh, the quantum devices. And so that that's with uh, that's this QEC project, this quantum error correction project, and so that's with uh, Universal Quantum and Riverlane. And then uh, we also have uh, another project with uh, with Xanadu. Uh, it's between uh, uh, Canada and the UK governments, and so that is kind of targeting uh, a little bit of the compilation steps with one of our algorithms. And then we also have uh, another other project where we're targeting uh, material uh, discovery. And so that specifically, I think today we're looking at, uh, not just I think, uh, we're looking at uh, like hydrogen embrittlement. So uh, when we're developing, we're trying to develop uh, hydrogen engines for the future to, uh, to have cleaner engines uh, and just more sustainable fuels. Uh, and just like what that uh, is really going to do to the engine itself. Uh, we also are involved in a number of just like smaller scale projects. And so these are uh, our hackathons, kind of similar to this kind of thing, but I think a bit smaller scale. We've been involved in both of the, uh, the NGCC's hackathons. Uh, we do small projects with various startups like uh, like Classic and Xanadu. And we also fund uh, PhD work. So yeah, we've got uh, kind of stuff all over the board. Um, yeah, so, so I'm going to be talking about a couple of our our applications um, that, that kind of are, are united within themselves. Uh, and so one of these is, uh, is computational fluid dynamics. And so I think we've got like a video uh, that we can probably post in the chat uh, because this one is not going to be able to run. But uh, we we model the fluids that are going on uh, inside, uh, like the, the fluids, the movements of the fluids uh, inside the engine uh, up to at, up to a scale of 4.6 billion elements. And so that's uh, just like dividing these down into a really small scale so we can kind of understand all of the, uh, the different little like flows and like turbulences that are going on with the fluids to then understand kind of the, uh, the stresses that will then be applied uh, to the, uh, the 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 engine itself, and then eventually uh, see yeah just what what an engine might be able to do. Uh, with this, then we also have hand in hand uh, with this uh, our finite element uh, method modeling techniques, and so this is where we're actually looking at the uh, the materials themselves and uh, observing how the materials uh, will react to us uh, to certain stresses depending on their um, their formation and then also just like the material itself. Uh, here, I just have like a cutaway of one of our FEM models of the full engine and then also just uh, kind of the the, uh, the 1D stiffness matrix uh, for a, uh, the stiffness matrix equation for like a single element uh, that's like in a, a 1D uh, situation. So these, uh, we, we cheat these together uh, so, so if we have like uh, four billion uh, elements, we're gonna need four billion of these that are then all coupled together, but then also in like a three D situation. So we have uh, we have some cool uh, we we have a pretty intense uh, computational stack that we're caring about. So both of these uh, CFD and FEM they kind of go through uh, a similar loop where we we start with some kind of model, so like the uh, some new design that we have. And we're going to uh, to mesh that, so we're going to discretize it uh, into a bunch of little pieces. So that's where the uh, this like four and a half billion uh, comes from. Uh, these like we're dividing it up into a bunch of little pieces. We then can translate those pieces into uh, a, a series of equations. So it's like a linear system of equations, and then we we end up solving that. And so that takes the form of uh, we're like inverting a matrix, and so these matrices can be quite big. Uh, anywhere from like millions by millions to even billions by billions, and so uh, that's that's a really intense process. As a uh, as yeah, I mean, just inverting a matrix is is uh, uh, yes, it's computationally difficult, especially at that scale. And so this is uh, this solving this linear system is the the bottleneck that we're really looking at, and we're hoping that in the future we might be able to use quantum computer store. Um, so uh, for this, there are a few different quantum linear systems algorithms, so like quantum algorithms that will solve these linear systems. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about a few of those. And so one is the, uh, it's like more for the NISC era and probably nothing that we'll, we'll be seriously looking at outside of hackathons is the uh, the variational quantum linear solver. And so this is a sketch of a variation on that, with the coherent variational quantum linear solver, which I believe there's a, a Penny Lane demo uh, on the web of, uh, put together by, I think, Andre Amari. Uh, and so this is, yeah, it's a, a, 
kind of a standard variational algorithm, we have uh, some parameters that we can optimize on uh, in a uh, classical like outer loop. Uh, but we, if we're actually running this on a quantum computer today, we have like loads of noise and uh, like barren plateau phenomena that we would have to deal with if we wanted a good solution. And so we're probably not going to get to the uh, the four and a half billion by four and a half billion uh, matrices that we're looking at uh, today. So this I think is for like a two by two. Um, so, so one of the the algorithms that we see as having the future potential is this uh, this HHL algorithm uh, written. I don't know. I think it was like 2010, maybe uh, 2008. Yeah, I think it was 2008. Uh, and so this is uh, a fault tolerant algorithm that really takes advantage of uh, a few different subroutines that uh, have been fundamental in quantum computing. Uh, and so for this, uh, it's kind of a simple circuit that uh, I've uh, drawn out here. So we're we're loading in. We're doing some. Uh, uh, we're, we're loading in the B vector uh, in our linear system of equations. And so this is where we have like state loading. And so that's kind of a, a thing that we do. We then use a quantum phase estimation to express that uh, express that B vector in terms of the uh, the eigenvalues of the uh, of the, the matrix that we care about. Uh, we then want to, uh, we're going to invert them, uh, these, these eigenvalues, because that is uh, somewhat equivalent to inverting the matrix. And then we will go back, use, use an inverse of the, the quantum phase estimation to go back into the uh, basis that we care about. And so it's a pretty, uh, pretty simple algorithm. I just have a tricky little thing where, uh, based on this, uh, we need to, at the end, be measuring in the one state. And if we don't, we can just like keep rerunning uh, this main circuit. Uh, until we eventually measure a one. So we don't actually have to measure all of these guys. Uh, we just measure this one and then maybe rerun the circuit. Um, yeah, this this has a, a, a not horrible complexity. I mean, it also was the, the first quantum algorithm for, for linear systems. And so it, uh, it scales uh, like, uh, yes, quadratically with the, uh, with kappa, which is this, uh, this uh, just, uh, yeah, it, it, it depends on the, uh, the eigen spectrum of the matrix that uh, we're inverting. Uh, yeah. So we also have this newer algorithm, uh, and so this is where uh, we've put in a bit of time, uh, and that um, a few of our programs are really working on today. And so this is the uh, the quantum singular value transformation. And so with this, uh, it, it takes like kind of a, a quite a bit of a different form. So we just take the matrix, uh, we're, we're inputting it into this algorithm along with uh, some polynomial, and then these will give us a transformation of the matrix or the the matrix sees. Uh, uh, singular values. And so for this, uh, there's there's a couple of subroutines. So in quantum, uh, as, as we probably all know, we need to have uh, to, to have unitary operations. We need uh, operations that uh, we, we can reverse, essentially. And so for this, uh, we, we can't just have like any, we can't just put any matrix onto the quantum computer itself. We have to uh, take the the matrix and put it into kind of what, what we do in the, the quantum singular value transformation is we put the uh, matrix itself into like a block of a unitary. And so that's what I'm kind of representing right here. And then we, we can not care about the uh, the stuff that's going on in the, uh, the rest of the unitary. But we're really caring about this little bit right here because then we can uh, we can operate on it in a, uh, a very specific way. So uh, in the circuit itself, there's a few different ways to do this. And uh, one of these is having like a linear combination of unitaries. And so that's kind of what I'm re representing right here, uh, which which can scale kind of in a crazy way. And the, the compiling to do that is uh, is an entire other uh, situation. But yeah, uh, Penny Lane has a couple of cool demos on this as well. Um, so we, we couple this then with uh, a technique extended from quantum signal processing, which is where we have uh, uh, we we have like a polynomial, uh, some some polynomial that's estimating the uh, the transformation the function that we are uh, that we want to apply to the uh, the matrix itself, and uh, we we uh, we decompose this into a set of uh, of phase rotations on an ancilla qubit in in our uh, in our circuit, and so actually I'll, I'll, I have the circuit in the next page after this, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to estimate the function on uh, on some like area. And so this is the uh, the, the inverse, right? And so uh, when we have one of these these uh, polynomials, we are we're getting close to that, at least in the regime that we care about, because we were saying we don't really care about this. Um, so to find these phase angles, there's a few different uh, ways to do this. Uh, luckily, there's just some good uh, 
good uh, GitHub repos that allow us to do this. Uh, also, there is a, a great paneling demo on uh, quantum signal processing. So we can put this all together into a circuit that looks something like this. And this is not just for matrix inversion. We can do all kinds of other things like amplitude amplification and uh, Hamiltonian simulation, uh, depending just on the, uh, the phase angles, essentially, that we have up here. And so we can apply many, many, many uh, different functions to our matrices based on a, a, a uh, like one one kind of circuit essentially just changing the uh, the rotations that we have so this is a really really neat algorithm um it has a better uh query complexity than the hhl and so the query complexity is like how many times we need to implement the uh, the matrix itself uh and then if we if we're not just estimating the uh the inversion function if we estimate a, a kind of similar function we can actually get that down uh, to an even better complexity uh, with with a few neat tricks. So the the steps to, to actually getting this onto a fault tolerant quantum computer, like even if we had one today, we wouldn't probably be able to do much with it. So uh, because of the fact that we still have to uh, to tackle a few of the these these subroutines, especially in the uh, the large scales that we're caring about. And so uh, some of the things that we're focusing on in in those projects that I was talking about earlier are the specifically the state loading and then the uh, developing. Um, so, so this is like, yeah, loading in the actual state that we're caring about. So usually that B vector, or maybe if it's in uh, one of these other, if it's for like another application, then yes, just loading in our, our starting state because that's not always uh, trivial. Uh, and then we have a few different other uh, like uh, subroutines that we need to care about. So that, that block encoding bit, because that's not always straightforward and having uh, an optimized uh, throughput for that is, uh, is important because uh, even if, uh, e even if we had like, the fastest quantum, even if our quantum computer was almost like almost instantaneous, I mean, it's not going to, right? Uh, but even if it was like really, really fast, uh, the, the pre-compilation step might also be a bottleneck that we want to kind of be planning for and finding uh, different patterns in the data itself that we can take advantage of so that, uh, yeah, our compiling isn't isn't too, uh, too intense. Uh, and then, so we also want to find uh, one of the other things that we're looking at uh, is is uh, the the class some of the the classical uh, so so besides just like classically compiling we we want to find analogs to classical preconditioning and maybe some other steps that we find in uh, in linear in computational linear algebra that uh, just like allow our algorithms to perform even better so these are some of the things that we are we are focusing on today in our programs uh, today we we definitely are not looking at these these very huge uh, matrices, these like many billions of elements. Uh, today we have uh, a, a set of rather simple uh, test cases. So uh, whether like on the left, that's a, uh, like a, a, a 2D lid driven cavity. And so like we have this, this lid that can lift up and we have like the fluids moving uh, inside of there. Or we have uh, uh, from the FEM point of view, we have uh, on the right, just a, uh, a 1D like beam that has a force on the end. So we want to see how, uh, how things move in there. And so these generate rather simple matrices, but uh, matrices that might have like sparsities and a few other things that kind of translate to the kind of problems that we care about in the future. And so these are where we are kind of today. And these are the, uh, the problem instances that we care about today. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't have, uh, too much else to talk about. So yeah, this is, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have too much else. This is, uh, I think, a, a artist rendering of one of our hydrogen engines. So I think we, like mid last year, I think in the autumn of last year, we actually had uh, one of our demonstrator hydrogen engines run for the first time, uh, at least in public. And so, yeah, we're, we're really pushing towards uh, this like I idea of net zero and having uh, cleaner engines in the future because, uh, yeah, that would be just really important. And it's really good for the, uh, the environment. So, and the globe so yeah uh yeah i don't have too much else that's uh all i have cool all right well uh jared it, it was lovely to have you uh for those wondering the open hackathon is open and uh rolls royce is offering uh to meet virtually with a winning team so definitely uh uh, participate in that and uh, maybe I don't know if it's you Jared or somebody else but uh, that'll be interesting Jared thanks so much for joining us at QHack um, it's lovely to have you with us today enjoy the rest of your day and uh, yeah take care <laughs>